What's up? My name is Sam Queen. Some people like to call me the Close Doctor. And over the last five years as Close.com's number one partner, I've built over 100 custom CRMs. And in this video, in exactly 10 minutes, we're going to break down all of the gadgets and gizmos that you'll find inside of a closed CRM account in 2024. If you're looking to be the first to receive updates on the wildly amazing integrations and automations and account structures that we're building over here at Close Doctor, I'm going to leave a link down in the description below to subscribe to our newsletter. Now let's get into the demo. You guys loved my full demo. It looks like this on your screen here if you're looking for more touch points on more of the gadgets and gizmos inside of Close. But in this video, we've only got 10 minutes. I'm going to start inside of the settings, team management, user groups. If you have setters and closers, I recommend you set up those user groups here, setters, and then another one closers. And then you can actually assign all of your users to those user groups for when you're round robining in the future, you can round robin and evenly distribute your leads. Custom activities are the backbone of a closed account that I'm going to come back to. Custom fields are where you can bring in information from applications, information from lead sources, information from survey data. It'll live on the left-hand side of a lead profile, which I'll hit on a little bit later in this video like this, where you can see application question one, application question two. You can have free response. You can have multiple choice. You can have date fields. Make sure when you are bringing in information to close that you're bringing it in in the right way. Calendly is a native integration inside of Close CRM, so that's pretty cool. Statuses and pipeline statuses are going to be your 30,000 foot overview on a leads relationship to a company. The actual demo account that we're going through right now, I filmed a whole about 45 minute video on setting up from scratch, but you don't want to get carried away with lead statuses. It's just the relationship of a lead to your company. I see people make way too many here. I like these five on your screen. Opportunity pipelines and statuses. I typically do a sales pipeline and a contract pipeline. My sales pipeline will track a lead through a sales process. My contract pipeline will track the contract, the money. It'll track the actual payments that are being made. You'll notice that when I go over custom activities, you'll see I have a custom activity pretty much named for every single stage of my sales pipeline. That's because it's a job of a sales rep or an automation to fill out that form, fill out that custom activity so we can collect the information that we need so we can make database decisions. Phone and voicemail, this is where you'll add your phone number. Close has a built-in dialer um, natively integrated with Tulio. I love it. I think it's what makes Close different is everything is very easy to use, very easy to understand. It's very clean and that built-in dialer and unified inbox really, really helps with the speed of communication so you can close more deals faster. You can add a group number as well. So maybe you want a 1-800 number on the front end of your website that people can call into, and then you can actually assign users to that number. There's that dialer there. Email, you can add a signature in here like most CRMs. Templates and snippets, you get email templates, you get SMS templates, and the snippets feature is new as of this year in 2024. So you can just backslash type in a little shortcut and then get a full code or whatever you want to have replace that, that little shortcut show up in your body of your email or your text. And then to create templates, you can add your template tags on any contact information as well, just like any other email template builder. Integrations, you can natively integrate your Zoom account. Zapier is what I use for all of my automations. Closes native automations and workflows in workflows here are not the best yet, but much better than where they were in 2023. But the triggers that you'll use will most likely come from Zapier at this time. Developer is where you'll add your API key. So if you're setting up Zapier, you want to integrate with Zoom or you want to integrate with Fathom, this is where you'll grab that API key to do that integration. Plan and usage. I recommend everyone use the enterprise plan and that's because you get more than five custom activities and you'll see in my builds, I always use more than five custom activities. That's it inside of settings. Let's go on to the inbox where we have a unified place. I obviously don't have anything in this inbox right now, but we can filter for emails. We can filter for missed calls. We can filter for incoming text messages. We can filter for tasks and everything can live in one place. Your opportunity pipeline is going to be that Kanban view to actually view your pipeline statuses, your pipeline stages. If I look at all time, I might have a couple in here. You can drag them between their respective statuses and stages. You can view by all statuses, active statuses, and you can even filter for whatever pipeline you want, whatever date range you want, or any smart views that you create as well. If you just want to see data in a specific smart view or by a specific user. Leads and contacts. If you're running a B2C offer, they're probably the same thing. If you're running B2B, a lead is going to be your company name and a contact is going to be those people that work within a company. So if I go to a profile, it would look like this, or this would show company name, and then your contact name would all live down here with all of your contact information, whatever is important to that information, as well as attach custom fields to the contact versus attaching custom fields over here on the left-hand side. While we are on this lead profile, some things 
I'd like to highlight is just going to be the features on the profile itself. This is what a sales rep would see when they click into a lead, when they click into a contact, your opportunities are going to live up here on the top left. I break down in the video on building a full CRM for coaches and consultants, why I use the contract and the sales pipeline and how I automate these things. And I say those custom activities are the backbone because you can create them just like forms as you see here. I have forms for new activities at top of funnel. I have forms for triage calls, getting booked, and you can automate that information coming in through Zapier so you can track the data of the activity, the data of the booking, the data of the call itself. Maybe top of funnel, you want to know when someone opts into a VSL or when they join your Facebook group or they grab an ebook. And as those forms, as those custom activities get filled out, you're actually going to see a paper trail in which a lead went through your sales process. From this page, we can send our text messages. From this page, we can send our emails and grab our templates. We can make our phone calls or we can log new custom activities or notes. It's a really good practice to also always assign tasks to yourself if you're following up in the process. And this is where you'll be able to assign tasks for yourself or other users as well. Inside of workflows, when we go to build a new workflow, we do have a few automated triggers like a lead status changing. And then you can even filter for that status changing. And maybe a custom field contains a certain specific thing. So only enroll this lead if the status changes to this. And this custom field says that they don't have any money to invest into our program. Then enroll them into a workflow that tries to financially qualify them. This video on your screen here is a very in-depth tutorial on workflows. But the general gist of workflows is you can call people from them. You can email people from them. You can text people from them. And then you can set the workflow to have a goal of count a conversion or pause a workflow when an enrolled content receives an incoming email, incoming SMS, or incoming call. So when one of those things happens, your workflow will stop sending the messages and you won't look silly talking to your leads and customers. Like any other workflow builder, you can add delay steps between each step. You can choose the template and you can choose who is sending as well as you can assign different users at steps in the workflow. So the conversations tab is new. This is going to be a great place for a sales manager to hang out and review all of the information, review the day and how things went for sales reps inside of their organization. But since you do have native transcription inside of Close, you can then use this as a sales manager, as a sales leader to search for certain keywords or phrases as you're doing sales coaching, sales training, or providing feedback to your team members. On the enterprise plan, you can even do whisper and barge mode, which will allow you to listen into conversations live. And if you want to see those conversations happening, you can see them on this tab here. Close.com does have native reports. I think native reports in any CRM are really good for activity-based metrics. I don't think they're good for your metric. But since you can't do any formulas inside of here, I can't take outbound calls and divide by total duration to get average duration on its own. Average duration is a stat. I can't make that formula because I can't make that formula. I can't get close rate inside of a close.com account. And this is pretty common for most CRM. So it's not just a close thing. But if you really want to see your data, you're going to have to put clean data in, keep the data clean inside of your account, and then extract that data into an external environment, to an external data warehouse like Google Sheets, like Looker Studio, so you can see the metrics that are important to you. And I love this activity comparison tab. It'll actually show each user and then whatever stats you want. So you can pair your users in one place. You want to see who made the most amount of dials in a day. It'll be very easy for you to do so. And the last thing that I want to highlight, that is smart views. Smart views are like lists and you can create these lists to filter for whatever you want. But if you bring clean data in and you format it the right way, you can filter for it. Last communication date, current status, how many calls someone's got, what custom activities have been pulled out, what imports were they brought in. And you really want want to treat smart views, not just like a list, but a bucket where leads fill up the bucket when certain criteria is met, like SS needs notes, which says here, a strategy session is booked, the data calls before today, and a sales rep didn't fill out a not completed form, didn't fill out a completed form. This says, hey, this lead right here, we need that sales rep to tell us what happened with it. It's a process check. And as soon as they tell us the lead disappears, it makes it really, really easy for you to manage and lead your sales reps. But for sales reps as well, if you create these lists, in the order of which you want them prioritized from lowest hanging fruit to highest hanging fruit. And you've got to take care of clearing out your smart views. And as long as you do that, I know you're doing your job and it makes leadership really easy and it makes a sales rep's life very, very easy. That's it for me in this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you want to see in the next videos and stay tuned for more sales operator and CRM content.